Hey everyone, it's Sarah and this is um, week 70. And this week we're talking about uh, navigating sexy time. Um, much like Emily, I'm not really going to discuss any personal details of me and Seth's sex life because I don't really feel like that's appropriate or that he would appreciate it. So I'm not going to really remark on much of that, but I will kind of talk about anything that I've learned along the way, being a partner of a trans person and just navigating um, sexual relationships in general. Um, I really, really liked a lot of what Emily said in her video. I thought um, that it was very eloquently said and she touched on a lot of things that um, I wouldn't have necessarily thought to bring up in this video. Um, so ditto to all of that. Good job, Emily. Um, <laughs> um, I definitely agree with the whole communication thing. I think that's the biggest thing in any sexual relationship. It doesn't matter who you're dating or having sex with, um, you definitely need to have the lines of communication open and you need to be able to be super honest with the person that you're sleeping with in letting them know um, what makes you comfortable, what makes you uncomfortable, what makes you feel good, what makes you feel bad, what makes you feel weird, what whatever. Like It's just important that you talk to whoever you're um, in an intimate relationship with about those things um, and that you listen to the needs and wants of your sexual partner as well. Um, it's hard to talk about this video without bringing things into it that um, don't involve, or it's hard not to bring things in into the video that um, relate back to our sex life, but basically just just be really open and understanding of the fact that not everyone has dysphoria as Emily mentioned but those who do um, there are things that you can do and say that you might not think can create dysphoria in that person but they might and they might not tell you in the heat of the moment because they might not want to ruin it but it's really important as Emily said to ask that person afterwards how certain things may or may not have made them felt if you maybe you notice that their body language changed when you engaged in that particular activity or um, sometimes you can just have a third sense about things and you can just kind of feel that that person is uncomfortable so it's really important that afterwards you discuss that with your partner and ask them how that made them feel um, why it made them feel that way or what they would like you to do instead. Um, again, that all goes back to communication and being honest and open with each other. Um, I think that a really good way to approach sex with a trans person is to discuss with them previous to even having attempted sexual interaction of any kind and just asking them how they feel about certain parts of their body and if they have dysphoria, um, in which area of their bodies they have dysphoria, um, what, how can I phrase this, like what, um, like phrases, like things that you say typically during sex, what things make them feel really uncomfortable and what things they like and makes them, and things that make them feel comfortable with themselves and comfortable with the idea of having sex or what turns them on and distracts them from the fact that they have dysphoria. Um, Cause there are certain things that a lot of people say and use during sex, um, like typical phrases or words or names that people use during sex that um, can be offensive or might make someone who is trans feel uncomfortable um, that you might again not even realize that it's going to make them uncomfortable. You might think that it's going to make them feel awesome and like hot and sexy but it actually might make them feel like shit because it might make them 
aware of the fact that they're trans or who knows, like I'm not a trans person, so I'm not in, I don't have that mindset and I try my best to understand where Seth's, where Seth is coming from or um, why something might make him feel uncomfortable or a trans person feel uncomfortable. Um, I don't always, I can't always connect the dots. Sometimes it's completely obvious to me why it might make him or someone who is trans uncomfortable and sometimes it's just a personal thing. It's a personal preference or it's something that I'm not really able to understand because I'm not trans. Um, so it's important to have that discussion before you have sex. Um, sometimes someone doesn't even know what they like or what they don't like because they may not have had sex. Um, I was Seth's first sexual partner, so uh, I hope that doesn't bother him. I don't think that it will, but um, I was his first sexual partner, and um, I think that through our throughout our sexual relationship, he has discovered things that he likes and doesn't like, and they might have been things, like, there might have been things that he thought he would like that he didn't like, or vice versa, so... I guess just be open to the fact that things might change or that you might assume something would be a good thing and it might be a bad thing or that your partner who is trans and if they haven't had sex before, they might assume that something might make them feel good about themselves and then it might end up making them feel bad in the moment. So just be honest and open with your partner and um, be open-minded in the sense that you, you might need to switch up. The, well, I think every relationship should, should switch things up, but um, I just mean be adaptable to your partner's needs because they might also change throughout the transition process. Something that might have felt good or might have made them feel more comfortable during sex at the beginning of their transition in your relationship might change over time and not be the same in a year or two years or whenever, um, at whatever point in their transition. So just be very flexible and open-minded and honest with your partner. And um, just to reiterate basically what Emily said, just like communication is so important. And you need to constantly keep that line of communication open for exactly the reason that I just mentioned and that things can change. So. Don't just assume that something that you did, that you talked about and your partner said made them feel good or comfortable in the beginning is going to stay that way throughout your entire relationship and throughout their transition. You need to continuously be asking those questions and telling your partner to talk to you about how they feel during sex and about certain activities that you are engaging in. Um, what else? I've actually heard um, a partner, another partner of a trans person, talk about how they kind of navigated sexy time and how um, they basically just had a play date, if you want to call it that. So they essentially just decided that this night we're going to make sure that there's no one else in the house or we're alone or no one's going to call or we have nothing to do. And we're just going to experiment with each other and figure out exactly what each other wants, like what makes each other feel good. And it's important also if you're going to take that approach to things to be honest and open and communicate with your partner and um, let them know that if this makes you feel awkward or weird or uncomfortable or bad or whatever, then stop me in the moment and I'm not going to take offense to that. Actually, that's a really good topic or point all in its own is to not take offense because this is something, it, it's such a, um, a sensitive issue for a lot of trans people and um, I totally lost my train of thought just now. <laughs> um, fuck, my brain is all over the place guys, sorry. <laughs> homework up like the wazoo and I fell down the stairs today so I think maybe some of my brains fell out. Um, yeah I have no clue what I was talking about but 
if you have any questions relating to that thought that just fell out of my head, feel free to comment below because I'm like totally scatterbrained apparently. Um, but the whole play date thing I think is a really um, unique and cool and fun way to kind of experiment with your partner and figure out things. Like even if you've never had sex, to do that in the beginning with anybody is kind of cool. And um, oh, I think I was talking about not being offended. Sweet. So just remember, like, you just can't take anything personally because it's not something that can be controlled. It's not something that can be helped. And sometimes, as I was saying before, how things can change over this, the span of your relationship or transition and what makes your partner feel comfortable, that could even just be time to time. Something that ha that felt good the last time you had sex might not feel good the next time that, that, that you have sex because that person might be in a heightened state of dysphoria like, or there could be other things going on or whatever. So um, just don't think, take things personally and it's really hard. I had a big issue with that um, or I had a big issue with that in the beginning of a relationship and I would constantly tell myself to not take things personally because it's not necessarily all of me although it takes two people to sleep together and communicate and all that sometimes it's not really something that you can help and it's not something that your partner can help either so you just kind of need to step back and breathe and like talk to your partner about it and ask like is there anything that I did that was um, wrong or made you uncomfortable or whatever or if there's any way that I can improve that certain activity or technique or is there a different way that I can approach this that's going to make you more comfortable or um, just ask your partner like if that particular activity sexual activity is something that you want during sexy time then feel free to like ask me and talk to me ultimately it all comes back to communication and that's what Emily was talking about as well which is why her video was sweet and it was obviously way better than mine because I just had thoughts fall out of my brain. So um, <laughs> I think that's pretty much all I have to say um, on that topic. Any questions or comments or anything, feel free to comment below. Um, and we'll see you next week, guys. Hopefully I'll be less of a scatterbrain next week. <laughs> and bye!